It is a great honor for me to address the World Readers Forum here at the Columbia University. So few words before I start. Of course, it's always a pleasure to visit the USA, but during the last two weeks, our thoughts have been with you because of uh, serious damages caused by the Hurricane Katrina. Even we have thought of you quite much. On behalf of myself and of the people of Finland, I would like once again to express my condolences due to the loss of the human lives. Finland is also participating already in the rescue effort by providing logistic experts and other assistance. So, ladies and gentlemen, the world is one. The United Nations has proved its importance over the past six decades with the major event summit, or I just heard today that the latest compromise which is going on, they said that it's high-level plenary uh, general assembly. This is one of the compromises now. But if I say the major event summit, so never mind. It's the same, same uh, summit anyway. So we are about to start a new chapter in the history of the UN. The prologue of this was created at the uh, 2000 Millennium Summit and I still remember the very special atmosphere of the summit. As the president of this General Assembly, this meeting, I listened very carefully to the speakers and what was said and promised and their body language, and I really had sincerely the feeling that that was something. The United Nations Millennium Declaration is a truly fundamental and far-reaching political commitment for peace, security, and development. The Millennium Declaration and the Millennium Development Goals were approved unanimously. Uh, the MDGs, as we call these goals, are ambitious and rightly so. The primary aim is to radically reduce poverty. The UN Conference in Monterrey in 2002 continued the work and agreed on means for financing development. In the same year, the United Nations Summit in Johannesburg focused on sustainable development and combined the first time, very visibly, the social dimension and ecological issues. So we have the nature and we have the man. And now I say very seriously that there is no need to change these political commitments or lower the ambition. To a great extent, agreement has also been reached on the means to, use, to be used in order to achieve the goals. And uh, like uh, Stiglitz has mentioned, so as a part of this work and to seek means for fair globalization, the ILO, ILO uh, International Labour Organization, appointed in 2002 a World Commission on the Social Dimension of Globalization. So the ILO financed it, but it was an independent World Commission. So, dear friends, many good things have happened, but the timetable for attaining the MDGs, the goals, is in many respects lagging behind the expectation set at the Millennium Summit in 2000. And yet it is simply a question of transforming political commitment into action and implementation. In theory, very simply, issue. We have the capacity, as I mentioned. We have the knowledge and we have the resources. Uh, the goals need to become a natural part of the implementation of so-called domestic policy objectives and of the national democratic responsibility. This is a challenge. But at the same time, of course, we have to see the international dimension of the situation, and that's why globalization is so important. Globalization is a mega trend that has a decisive impact on development and people's lives all over the world. And people feel that their possibility to govern their everyday lives is weakened. The World Commission had this World Commission, what Stiglitz mentioned, had really 24 members who represented, briefly said, a broad variety of views. 
I have said sometimes that from Davos to Porto Alegre, three of the members were Americans, and their views and expertise influenced also strongly to our work. I am already sure that you were aware that Professor Joseph Stiglitz was one of the American members. Um, the other two were Anne McLaughlin Coron Logos, who was the former U.S. Secretary of Labor, you know, parenthes, Republican, um, and a businesswoman. And the third one was John S. Sweeney, a famous trade unionist and the president of the uh, AFL-CIO. So really quite a different kind of opinions already from USA. So somebody has said that this uh, World Commission was originally a group of not like-minded people. They were just chosen because they have a different kind of opinions. But nevertheless, this commission reached a consensus on its final report, a third globalization, creating opportunities for all. So which kind of the report it was then? The message of the World Commission is critical, really critical, but yet positive. Globalization continues to have an enormous potential for improving people's quality of life. But at present, that potential is not fully used. Not enough people are benefiting, too many are suffering, or entirely excluded from globalization, and it's then unfair. Therefore, globalization can and should be reformed. The success of the World Commission report reinforces, I think, the fact that uh, we must never fall into the trap of one truth. We, we cannot think that we just have the only truth. Globalization has a very different meaning to people depending on their personal experiences. People live their everyday lives as part of a local community and a nation, even in the time of globalization. Fair globalization means more focus on people and on their needs. Nation states are still the main actors in globalization. The quality of global governance depends to a great extent on their actions. The way in which states pursue their own business has an impact on whether people benefit from globalization or whether they are spared from its negative effects. A strong, democratic state that respects human rights and the rule of law and applies good governance and social justice creates a solid foundation for the actions of individual citizens. Non-governmental organizations and civic movements are needed to support all this, and they must be able to play fully their role, be free in that way. In addition, the business, those who normally are proponents of globalization, also should hold social responsibility in globalization. Alongside the nation states, we need regional cooperation, such as the European Union and other cooperation organizations, now already in Asia, in Latin America, even in Africa. And then, of course, we need a global cooperation. The commitment of nation states to multilateralism, general values and shared goals, their awareness of the impact of cross-border activities and their commitment to solidarity are essential for the quality of global governance. I believe that efficient implementation of the Millennium Development Goals will help the developing countries join in globalization and vice versa. More efficient governance and a fair rule of globalization will turn into a means to attain uh, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. So, the audience. Each country has its own history, and no model can be transferred directly to another country. I think that you have heard it many times, also at this, in this building. But however, the basic components of development are the same 
the very same in the north and in the south, in both developing countries and more developed countries. And we have also agreed in the UN of these components. But how all this, what I'm now preaching, works in practice. So allow me to present one example, and uh, not making the others guilty, I take my own country. Within half a century, Finland has developed from a poor and remote country to a prosperous and stable society. And those of you who, who don't remember what Finland is, it's the most far, far most uh, corner of the Europe, uh, neighbor uh, to Sweden, Norway, and Russia. We were 600 years under the Swedish king and 100 years under the Russian Tsar. After that, when we became independent, not quite half a, half a century ago, uh, not, uh, not quite a century ago, uh, so we have had since that one civil war and two other wars, and the climate is still the same. So uh, that's it. But what we have done then? Our Nordic welfare state model is based upon a social justice and equality. We have made investments in healthcare, education, and equality. Finland and the other Nordic countries often come out on the top in the international comparisons, whether these concern competitiveness, the stability of the public economy, education, the equality between men, women and men, efforts to reduce poverty, absence of corruption, or the level of sustainable development. Um, also, this university has made some studies in this, these comparisons. So, I think that I can say that this kind of the Nordic welfare model has proven to be just and competitive. Then, let's go to the regional part. A membership in the European Union means economic and political security for Finland. Mutual cooperation helps the individual member states succeed. The European Union strives to promote growth, employment, and competitiveness in a socially fair and sustainable manner. These objectives are set down in the so-called Lisbon strategy. This strategy is one model, just one model for ambitious regional cooperation that can promote better governance of globalization. So, anything negative on that? Yes, unfortunately, the Union and the Member States have not implemented the strategy effectively or on schedule in all respects. And that's why we have also difficulties still in employment. Um, but this is a challenge and our task to accomplish. But I'm very happy and proud to tell you that it is possible to try to see the schedule and to see how it works. Uh, but it is really to action and implementation. So, ladies and gentlemen, the World Commission focused on how the consequences of globalization can be taken into account in policy making. Usually, discussions on globalization concrete only on economic factors like growth, inflation, interest rates, economic deregulation, or market access. Important issues, of course. But in Employment is a key means in eradication of poverty. Therefore, also employment should be made into a global goal. I think it's not too much to ask to have a decent job, which brings a livelihood for yourself and your family. A decent job. And however, far too many people that just can dream about it. If the employment impacts of economic policy decisions would be systematically assessed, that alone uh, might bring improvement in this situation. We also need to do more for the equality between women and men. We cannot make a real success in uh, reducing poverty unless the position of women is improved. They are the majority of the globe, not minority. It follows, therefore, uh, that mainstreaming equality in all activities is crucial and urgent goal. And you can be sure that I will repeat this also in UN. 
Long term approach and coherence of global policies are crucial for controlling the negative effects of globalization. International organizations must be willing for cooperation and welcome each other's particular strengths. I have in my mind, for example, the need to improve the coherence between trade regulations and the development agenda. Very often, what we have just done with the development agenda will be spoiled or made very difficult with trade agenda. So, for a year now, we have been gathering feedback on the World Commission report, and I have, I have been favorably su surprised by the amount of interest in the report and people's willingness to discuss its recommendations. I believe that our report is becoming part of the process of turning globalization into a fair process that creates opportunities for all. I think that Mr. Stiglitz and I, we do remember that we all were wondering in the Commission that one thing is, is, a make, is to make a good report, but even more important thing is to make report to be a part of the process, because the world is full of the reports, good papers, but the process, action, the implementation is what we need. But papers can help in that. So what's, what's now with the, this paper? The African Union has assumed the recommendations of the World Commission as a part of their globalization work. The social dimension is, uh, of globalization is also high up on the European Union's agenda. Last December, the United Nations General Assembly unanimously approved a resolution whereby the report of the World Commission was approved as a, one of the basic documents for this UN major event, or whatever was the name today. In addition, the topic has come up to both uh, the World Bank and the OECD. So, that was very good. Um, but as I said, report is a report. We must concentrate on creating means and processes to reform globalization and influence its direction. Finland and Tanzania have, together with friendly governments, initiated the Helsinki process. Last week, a conference took place in Helsinki as a culmination event of the Helsinki process. The key message of the conference was the need for the multi multi-stakeholder cooperation in finding lasting solutions to global problems. The ultimate aim of the Helsinki process is to make multi-stakeholder cooperation a permanent feature of global governance. So, we old fellows in that way, President of Tanzania, uh, Mr. Benjamin Makapa, uh, and I, we were co-chairing this commission as it was a discussion, uh, we participated in the conference and we're very happy to see the uh, one consequence of the process so far. Uh, for the future, all interested parties are welcome to join the Helsinki process and already now there are several countries which are trying to make the Helsinki consensus as, as well known as one other consensus. So, ladies and gentlemen, this year, the United Nations is the focus of celebration, but it is also the subject to the critical assessment. The world has changed and the security threats are different. Nevertheless, the United Nations Charter represents the values that will ena enable us to preserve security and stable con conditions in the future world as well as uh, balanced development. All countries, both great, big ones, and the small and poor ones, they are needed in the international cooperation that will ensure development, security, and human rights. And when I'm now here in Columbia University, I want to say very strongly that this international cooperation particularly needs the participation of the United States of America. Due its political and economic power, due its many resources, so, I hope you will be among those people who will make this wish of mine true. 
I have high expectations for the UN major event. It is a unique opportunity to give a new vitality to the United Nations and the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals. I still hope that we will be able this week to reinforce people's belief in the future and that we will be prepared to openly acknowledge existing problems, including the lack of the political will or the unfair distribution of the resources. Multilateral work is needed in order to strengthen fair processes of development. So, finally, I would like to highlight one important recommendation in the World Commission of the Globalization Report, in particular for the benefit of, of you, this audience. Policy actions need to be grounded in better analysis on trends in globalization and its impact on people and communities. Better and more gender-sensitive monitoring, research, policy reviews, and systematic reporting are all necessary to mobilize public opinion and ensure better governance of globalization. The World Commission encourages all institutions and networks to collaborate and invest in broad-based research on the social dimension of globalization. Networks of national, regional, and international institutions can build the capacity needed to address different aspects of globalization in a coherent way. In conclusion, I would like to encourage you to continue open and critical research teaching and instruction in your various expert areas and departments. I encourage you to share your information with the entire international community. Many of the leading academic institutions of the world are located here in New York, including your Columbia University. You are in the position of a great privilege in the worldwide academic community. And this brings with the greatest responsibility. I trust in you. Many thanks for your attention.